up, everybody? This is Jake Berkey with Busted Knuckle. I'm here with Trey. He's our lead sales guy. Uh, he's the guy you're going to be talking to most of the time whenever you call up here. Uh, this is our lightweight brake kit. And the reason that this kit exists and the reason that it's so popular is because the factory Super Duty brakes are gigantic. Um, they weigh a ton. The calipers are huge. The volume of the calipers is too large for most of the off-road industry's uh, components like um, master cylinders and pedals and things like that. So we designed this for two reasons. One, um, it allows us to have a lighter weight axle, which is gonna behave better with your suspension. Uh, it increases the amount of horsepower you're getting out to the tire because you're not having as much rotating mass. And also it is a caliper that size better for the off-road parts that we generally see and use. So. That's why you need this kit. Now, if you're buying one of these kits, you need to make sure that you go and watch our uh, brake video. It's called the simple brake video. And basically it's going to explain how to size your calipers to your master cylinder properly. Uh, whether you have a single master cylinder powering all four of your calipers or you have a non-balanced system like you have two master cylinders on a uh, single pedal and they're different sizes going to front and rear. Basically, it's a bias system. Or if you have like a tandem master cylinder, all three of those scenarios are going to give us a little bit different design on what we do with our brakes. Um, so make sure you watch that video because it's going to educate you on how you're going to make this system work extremely well for your situation. Now for our situation, we have found that a one inch high volume master cylinder uh, plumbed uh, with, a, with a T in it that goes to the front and goes to the rear makes these calipers lock these rotors and your tires down like you wouldn't believe. It almost feels like power brakes. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I can do 40, 50 miles an hour in my buggy on pavement, uh, slam the brakes, lock all this stuff down, no problems with you know less than 100 pounds of force and come skidding to a stop. Um, so it works. We have proven over and over again it works. And if you listen to our recommendations, it will also work for you. So Trey, what comes in the kit and uh, what, what should we expect when we do our unboxing? Gotcha. So you should get two calipers the two sets of pads in one box so you only get one box of pads just like part source stuff you get our two rotors that are drilled for both patterns already that's standard in the super duty stuff uh, anything that has the super duty or the 14 bolt in our uh, categories are going to have the double drilled rotors um, you got your caliper brackets we we'll go over that in a little bit later in the video in the assembly uh, these bolt to the knuckle and then also to the calipers uh, you get all of the spacers, these uh, 3 8 ID spacers, bolt the calipers to the brackets. Uh, you'll have the 5 8 hardware to attach the brackets to the anchor bolts and the knuckles, lock washers and, and nuts for all that good stuff. Uh, one thing to note about this, um, when you put these bolts through these spacers, you'll notice right off the bat that they kind of don't fit. It's actually by design. So we, we sourced spacer material that actually had a slightly different uh, inside diameter. It's almost a press fit going onto the bolt. And the reason is, is we want this to be an assembly. And in the next video, we'll, we'll show you, we, we can, you can also tack weld them together. But when you put this bolt through and then you put your spacer on the opposite side, you'll notice that it's, it's kind of tight going on there. But if you take that assembly and you smack it with a hammer and run that bolt all the way down there, that spacer becomes almost one with this unit. And then whenever you're taking your caliper on and off, uh, all you're doing is taking your big bolts on and off and the caliper stays bolted to the assembly, just like a factory brake caliper system. Uh, that way you don't have these little spacers that you're constantly messing with and, and having to fight or whatever. So you can tack weld them or you know you can just use the kind of a press fit. It's about a thousandths or so that kind of you know presses in on there. Um, now we do have different brake pads, right? We've got uh, the yellow box, right? And then we have this box. And what's the difference in those two? And also what are the benefits of having the Willwood calipers? Because there's obviously a ton of different brake pads that are out there. Right. Why do we choose these? What's, what's the difference between them? 
Well, they're just different levels of uh, sticky or, you know, uh, heavy duty your pads that the, the stickier the pads, the higher the grade, like A, B, C, D is how they're uh, spec with Willwood. Your A pads are going to be your race pads. They're going to have a lot of extra grab, but they're not going to last for a long either. If you're racing, these are probably the pads you want, but you should expect to change them, you know, every one or two races, depending on the style and, you know, of racing. And as we go down in the alphabet, they grab a little less, but they last a bit longer. Uh, these will be the pads that you'll get standard with the kit. If you want to have a substitution on the pads, you want to discuss that a little bit, just give us a call and we can make recommendations based on that. But they're more like your ceramic pads that cost more at the parts store versus your economy pads. Yep. So We choose uh, an e-pad for most off-road situations because these particular pads uh, work extremely well but also don't gall really bad whenever you get dust and dirt into the integrate integrated into the system right uh whereas like the a pads and the b pads and stuff you know if you get dirt in the system which we're all going to be off-roading uh they do tend to wear extremely fast and they tend to put big grooves in your rotors uh and they tend to eat up really bad with the dirt and this stuff but a pads are sweet they stop <laughs> that's for sure i'm talking about like you know 50 miles an hour you put your pinky toe on there and you can slide like it's it's unbelievable but you have to know that they're not going to last very long so e has been the best overall that we found um now these we mentioned are going to weigh lighter or, or less than the super duty brakes do you remember right. what that uh, weight was it's about it's like 32 pounds per side so per 66 side. total yes when you get rid of the giant uh, hardware that goes with the super duty pads or the super duty rotors mm -hmm. um you know you're substituting this for the grind the giant anchor um uh, but you also have the benefit with the willwood calipers of just pulling the pin here to change the pads so that's all really convenient um, again, you know, just if you ever need to pull the calipers off, just pull the, the big bolts out. Uh, and if you just need to change the pads, just pull the, cal the uh, cotter pin out, slap new pads in there, it's nice and easy. Yep, we have uh, a buggy that's actually got a pretty decent wheel offset. And when it's time to change the pads, we can just go over there and just pull that pin, slap new pads in there, put the pin back in. We don't even have to take the tire off or wheel. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. So yeah, lightweight brake kit, man, that we've got these available for the 05 Up Super Duty. That's what this is, uh, the video of this is for. Uh, this also works uh, the same concept with a couple of our other kits, uh, but we'll go into more depth on some of that stuff. And if you guys have any more questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us, but hopefully this tech video answers enough questions that you can be uh, assembling and, uh, and, and on your merry way. All right, so when we get everything assembled, this is what it should look like. You should have your caliper sitting here. Obviously your pads are gonna be sitting here. You've got your cotter pin going through. Uh, people move these cotter pins around however they like. Some people like to flare them both. Some people like to flare one side. Uh, but the, the technical thing is that you've got your cotter pin going through to hold your brake pads on. Uh, the bracket should be on the side closest to the uh, middle of the axle. Um, and then your spacer should come from that bracket to space the caliper into where the brake rotor is going to be. Um, something that we see a lot of times is guys will just slide their rotors up and then they'll try to put all this stuff together and call us and say that they have an alignment problem. But actually what it is is that the rotor itself uh, hasn't been completely seated up against the hub. So we like to just take maybe like one or two lug nuts and we'll put those on there and tighten them down. That'll center up that, uh, that rotor and keep everything nice and square. Um, but yeah, this is what it's supposed to look like when it's all said and done. Uh, let's spin it around, Trey, so they can kind of see it from the other side too. Okay. So there you go. That's, that's exactly what it looks like. You can see we've got the, the two different patterns, uh, the eight on 170 and the eight on six and a half. We're running eight on six and a half for this particular setup. If you were running eight on 170, you'd be going through the factory holes. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, what else should we tell them? Uh, mainly uh, when you get the Willwood calipers, you do got to bleed both calipers, uh, bleeders. You want to start with the outermost and then with the innermost. The port size on these Willwood calipers is 1 8 NPT. Uh, we have those available on the website in straights, 90s and 45s, and we can adapt that 1 8 NPT to dash 3 or dash 4 um, and couple those with our custom stainless brake lines, and it's a nice, easy setup. Yeah. Uh, but the brake line size is a very common question. Um, on these, there are basically no spacer tubes needed. You just take off your uh, factory caliper anchor that's in place, 
and bolt in our flat bracket. It does go on the inside of the knuckle and then the spacers on the opposite side. Something that we like to do uh, just kind of makes ease of installation at times. Uh, we'll actually take a little tack weld and weld that spacer to that bracket. And then it behaves very similar to like a factory brake system, right? So if you're, if you're wanting to take this apart and put new brake pads or something like that, all you have to do is take your top, you know, your big bolts, you take your big bolts off and then everything comes off as an assembly, just like you would have in a factory brake system. Yeah. Uh, and then everything goes back together. There's actually no need to uh, take these bolts here, the small bolts and take them in and out. So they can really be oriented however you want to. You could have the nut on the inside or the outside on either one of the bolts in this situation because if you think about it as an assembly, the entire brake caliper and bracket assembly would come off as a unit by just taking these upper bolts off or the, the larger bolts. Uh, there are 15 sixteenths. Um, you can get these absolutely as tight as you possibly can. No problems there on the, um, on the 3 8 bolts. Uh, snug them down really good. Uh, it comes with lock washers and all that stuff, so uh, it, it's going to be nice and tight. Uh, something to bring up about the lock washers. Um, generally, we like to see lock washers on the nut side. That's kind of a standard practice is to put the lock washer on the nut side. But because these calipers are made out of aluminum, uh, we wouldn't want that lock washer on the aluminum side. So we actually place the lock washer on the nut um, on the back side of the bolt and then we put the nut through on the other side. Uh, in this particular situation. So um, that's it, man. I think, uh, you know, oh, I forgot about one other thing. When you get this finally assembled, uh, we get guys a lot of times that call and they ask because the brake pads aren't completely on top of the rotor. Like you can actually see down inside here that there's about a, maybe an eighth inch or something like that of the brake pad that's actually above the rotor so it's not touching. Uh, that's just part of the design from the Willwood, uh, from the Willwood brake caliper. Uh, the rotors themselves are larger diameter than what the actual caliper can have. So in this situation, the brake pads hang off just a little bit. Don't worry about it. It's going to work just fine.